plant cell model number one. This is a model of a plant cell. I will be discussing and explaining all of the structures and their functions. This is a plasmodesmata. It's a contact structure that connects two neighboring cells, allowing substances to move back and forth through these small channels. If we look a little closer, we can see the actual tube here adjoining the interior of two cells. This is the nucleus of the cell, the control center, if you will, that contains all of the DNA and chromosomes. I've got the pointer on the nuclear membrane, and you can actually see the nuclear pores from which messenger RNA will exit the nucleus to go out and interact with ribosomes. And then we're going to look at the nucleus. Inside of the nucleus is an area here. We can see the small purple ball there. That is called the nucleolus. The nucleolus is where ribosomes are manufactured. Here's a closer look at the nucleus and we can see the nucleolus a little better there. These are the little nuclear pores in the nuclear membrane and all of this area here would be chromatin or the chromosomes containing the DNA. Next I want to survey some of the structures of the endomembrane system. The first being the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is often abbreviated smooth ER. And the smooth endoplasmic reticulum serves to produce and digest fats and membrane proteins. It contains a lot of enzymes. Here is rough endoplasmic reticulum. It is called rough endoplasmic reticulum or rough ER because there are bound ribosomes attached to it. Ribosomes are manufactured here in the nucleolus and they exist as either bound ribosomes which are attached to the rough ER or free ribosomes that are moving around in the cytoplasm. Bound ribosomes produce the proteins that are exported or proteins that are incorporated into the plasma membrane of the cell while the free ribosomes generally make proteins that function within the cell in the cytosol. Now recent research has shown that ribosomes will attach to ER for a while and then sometimes they will break off and become free ribosomes. The free ribosomes are just as likely to attach themselves to ER becoming bound ribosomes. This is the Golgi body. We have a second one up here. And I like to refer to the Golgi body as a shipping and receiving center. It receives proteins, packages them, and then exports them out of the cell. Here are some vacuoles being formed off of a Golgi body, and there is one that is involved with exocytosis. These next structures are referred to as mitochondria. Mitochondria produce ATP, or energy, for a cell. Mitochondria strongly resemble capsulated bacteria and even have their own unique DNA. They are hypothesized to have formed a symbiotic relationship with an early cell in some distant past. These are chloroplasts. Chloroplasts exist in plant cells and are factories that basically take the energy from sunlight and turn it into a chemical energy that can be used by other organisms. These are lysosomes. Lysosomes are small organelles that contain digestive enzymes inside of a cell. This organelle, the vacuole, is unique to plant cells. It stores water, helps the plant maintain its shape, and can also store certain waste products. This area of the cell represents the cytoplasm, and even though you can't see it very well on this photograph, this model does have little cytoskeletal filaments that are represented by the lines here in the cytoplasm. Plant cells are unique in that they have a plasma membrane made of a phospholipid bilayer as well as a cell wall which adds rigidity and structure to the cell. 